Hello and welcome back. This is video number four. We're going to talk about two different things. We're going to talk about bartering and a trick that I've created specifically to get more clients. So you can use bartering as a means to get more clients because some clients are just not willing to dish out a lot of money, but they're willing to offer you a high value service that would normally cost you, you know, four or $5,000 or $7,000 or in exchange for what you have to offer. And what you have to offer could, you know, cost you uh, a certain amount of time, you know, several hours, uh, about a day, a few days, or you could outsource the process for, you know, a couple hundred bucks or less. So I want to open this to you and kind of give you an eye opener on how you can go about bartering and how you can get more clients as well in you know, not just bartering, but we're going to talk about two different methods that you can use. So, like I said, some clients are just open to bartering rather than paying money up front. And I actually had a good example of this. I had an electrician who I had, you know, come to my my house and, you know, I had them you know, give me estimates. And I, I picked and choose several clients, several electricians were actually became clients later on. Now, one particular electrician who came, I said, Hey, you know, how's, how's work going? How's business going? Just start up a friendly chat. And, you know, he told me what he was doing. And, you know, he said, you know, he was just frustrated because a company that he was paying was using non-native writers from India. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't any good India writers, uh, this company was just outsourcing to a non-English speaking type writers. So as you can imagine, the content that came back <laughs> just didn't make a lot of sense or it just wasn't really converting. So with this type of deal, you do need to have some sort of English speaking copywriter. And it doesn't matter if they come out of the US, Australia, the UK, as long as they are experienced in writing good sales copy, that is key. So this is the opportunity where you can take a big problem and say, Hey, you know, okay. I understand that you're getting content from non English speaking you know, speakers or whatever non native language that you're trying to, you know, create the content for. It doesn't have to be English. Uh, but for the majority of you, that that's who I'm speaking to. But you know, if you want to get a read in the Hebrew, then or you know Spanish, then you want to make sure that you use a native speaker in that language. And you might really want to find a good sales copywriter in that language. Now, going back to this, so that we don't get off in a tangent here, this presents a problem, but this presents an opportunity for you. Not only can you provide good content, you can provide content that converts. You can provide call to actions that get more click throughs and you can offer this to the client and think about this as a means to gaining their trust. Once you gain their trust, you can do more things. You don't have to bombard them with, you know, SEO, this and that just yet. You can do it, complete the job, gain their trust and say, Hey, along the way, you know, I noticed your site as I was editing it, you know, it was HTML. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but you know, you can get better rankings via, via WordPress and other means, you know, you can do this, you can do that, you know, give them ideas on exactly what they can do. You know, be open. You can even tell them what to do because the majority of times clients that go out and do it, <laughs> they'll come back to you and say, Hey, I can't do this. I got to do my job. I got to do, I got to run my business. So they end up coming back to you because they realize that you're genuine and you actually care. You're not like everybody else who's just selling to sell. All right. So going back to my electrician, I had my whole house electrical system upgraded from 150 amps to 200 amps. He did all my wiring. You know, something that would normally cost me about $3,500 to $5,000. I actually 
outsource the content to a native English copywriter for about $500. It was a lot of content. It was about 30 pieces of content. And, but when, after that, you know, of course I'm pretty anal about stuff. So I reviewed the content, kind of rewrote it a little bit, repositioned a little bit of uh, the angle of conversions to increase his conversions. So I did spend a little time and I installed a bunch of WordPress plugins on its website, made sure that it was up and running, you know, and, and, and this, a lot of the stuff, because it was kind of like my first thing, I did a lot of the work, but then as things progressed, you know, I hired people on Fiverr of all things. You know, I paid people, you know, 20 bucks on Fiverr and offered services that, you know, normally charge, you know, $500 or more because of that. Now, other examples, for example, I had a friend who, who now is a friend, but at the time was not, but he had a headhunter website. He basically would find people, you know, clients who needed particular people for specific jobs. And this particular job website, his website was quoted by a competitor for $15,000. Now, I can understand that because they wanted a specific site that allowed them to collect interviewees, get them into their database so that they can interview them and then get them to their client. So it was a process, but guess what? I found, you know, I did some research. I went on, found some WordPress plugins that actually would do every, all, all that stuff for free. So a free WordPress plugin, I actually found a free WordPress plugin that worked better than a paid version of a WordPress plugin. So as long as you do your due diligence, you find what you need and you can see that, okay, this is definitely not going to take me that long. You know, you can outsource this process for 50 bucks, get a WordPress expert, do all this stuff. And I quoted $3,000. So it wasn't a whole lot of time. You know, I spent, you know, a couple hours and I outsourced most of it and gave them a very professional WordPress site. And I really converted them from HTML to WordPress. I installed a bunch of plugins, made it security, you know, good security, good SEO friendliness so that they could add content in the future. And I got to sit down with their secretary, showed her, you know, the routes of how to edit WordPress and things like that. And as far as saving time, you know, you can find WordPress videos out there to, you know, get these WordPress videos, put them on your website and just point them to the training site very, very easily. In fact, if you do want WordPress videos, come to think about it. If you go to tutorialmixer.com, uh, you'll be able to find private label rights to WordPress videos. So you can rebrand them with your own information and things like that. All right. So moving back over to here, what you want to do, like I said earlier, is look on Google and see who is running Google hours ads or just paid ads in general. If they're doing that, they're going to see value in what you have to offer. So you want to do your due diligence and spy on them. Now see what else that they are doing. And then of course you want to run their site through GT metrics, like I showed you in the previous video, or you can use other analysis tools as well. It doesn't have to be GT metrics and save the report as a PDF or save the link and send it to them. Now let's talk about a very specific method that you can use to get them to your house. Now, so if you have a house, this works really well. You can get stuff done at your house to get people, you know, to come to you. So as they are coming to you, they're thinking, okay, I can sell something to you. But in reality, you can convert them into a client. So the one warning I want to say is do not abuse this. You want to be trustworthy, genuine, and honest. So do not abuse this. Let's say, for example, that you need to get a routine HVAC air conditioner cleaned. What you do is you get an estimate from five to 10 companies. Every time they come, you can ask them, Hey, how is your business going? Get them to open up, share with them tips. A lot of times they'll say, eh, business is doing okay. 
but it could be, or it, it's doing okay, it, it's doing really good, but it could be better. They're always going to say that. They're always going to want more leads, more clients, things like that. Now, if you ask them that, you give them information, they're going to say something like, well, you know, I've got a WordPress site or I got a website and it's, it's okay. It's, I'm, I'm paying a lot of ads, this and that. I'm just not getting a lot of conversions. So what you could do is use my method earlier, you know, get estimates for five to 10 people that you know are actually, you know, actually have a website, actually have a Facebook fan page, actually fall under the low hanging fruit. Now, when I say don't abuse this earlier, I said, you know, if you don't really need your air conditioner cleaned, then don't call people. You know, it's not going to be nice if you call people, you know, for quotes for plumbing, if you don't really need plumbing. So I'm just saying that because that's who I am. And I typically, if I need something done, I'll call people. But in the meantime, use this to your advantage. That's really what I'm trying to say here. So what you can do, you got five different companies that have already been pre-qualified by you and you share with them tips, you talk to them, and then you pick the contractor that you think can do the best job at your house, but is also probably a really good client that you can you know, pay them you know, and they can become your client. You, you gotta realize when they come to you, their guard is down. It's harder for sellers to resist buyer's proposals. So obviously, You've already done your pre-qualification. Um, there's really no guarantee that they are going to become a client of yours. But generally speaking, if you actually get them to do stuff and get them to your house and then you say, hey, next time you come, I'm going to show you some really cool stuff. So come back later uh, and do the job. Now, this tends to work really on, you know, mom and pop type companies, not big franchises where they just send whoever. Uh, so typically smaller companies are easier to deal with. They generally are the people that do quotes. The owners will do the quotes and things like that. So if you talk to them and you really appeal to them, you say, Hey, I'll show you something really cool. Uh, or, Hey, what's your email? I'll send you, send you something, you know, GT metrics analysis. I'll give you a free analysis of your, of your website. So stuff like that can go a lot of way. So like the electrician earlier, I was actually initially a buyer. I had him come to my house and grounded some of my outlets and, you know, he added, you know, motion lights, some security and stuff like that. So while he was there, I gave him a lot of tips. I said, Hey, you know, this is what you could do to your website. Go do this and that. What I didn't realize that was he had actually actually already tried a lot of different things. So at that point in time, he was so frustrated because he had paid a lot of money to all these other companies. And he said, you know, Hey, you, you're actually giving me a lot of this information. You know why, you know, I'd tell him stuff where he could go out and do it and he would actually go and do it and he would get some results. And by doing that, I was able to gain trust. And in the long haul, you know, he was willing to do more and more business with me. So this is not about SEO only. I had another client that came and, you know, cleaned my gutters and everything. And I gave him a lot of tips on video marketing. So yes, video marketing kind of SEO ish, but I, I talked about, you know, how to create a video that gains people trust, you know, how to use YouTube for free. And you know what he did? He emailed me later and said, Hey, I want to get started. I want to, I want you to look over my website, give me some tips and how we can work together. So it doesn't necessarily all have to be SEO. That's what I'm trying to get because everybody else is trying to sell SEO. So it's about seeing where your client stands and how you can get them from this point, point A to point B, which is getting clients and lo and leads and potential customers. And what I've seen over the years is most clients and local clients have websites, 
that are not even to the point of being search engine friendly. So they're really missing out on the potential you know, SEO rankings with WordPress and things like that. So in the next video, we're going to talk about a crucial opportunity that arises because a lot of companies and a lot of clients just are not using WordPress.